mean, it was really just a full breakdown, you know, everything you need to learn. Basically the A to Z. From where to start, exactly what to do, how to do it, all the systems, the programs. The resources and things that were given throughout the training was just phenomenal. What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Deal Desk. Today is episode 50. That's crazy. Episode 50. If you're new to this, basically how it works, submit your leads. Go to the reitoolbox.com. You could submit your lead. Watch me call it live. I'll also be doing a live Q&A. So if you have any questions regarding anything, go ahead and drop them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them in between calls. I'll call the lead twice if they don't answer twice i move on to the next lead okay so let's get started let's get started so the first one is looks like it's in um we got one in jacksonville let's pull this up give me one second this one actually i think this might be a duplicate i'm not sure let's give him a call though i'm calling using my google voice just in case you're wondering I'm running comps on prop stream. You can head over to the deal desk, uh, data.com. Okay. You get a seven day free trial in there. All right. So let's call this person. What's the details with this? Actually, this one, I'm not sure if I call this one, somebody may have, uh, submitted it again, but let me share my screen and show you what I'm looking at here. Cause it doesn't show a house, uh, share screen. So let me actually do this. So this is what <laughs> this is the house I'm looking at here. Sometimes I'll do this, but um, not much to see here. Maybe the house is so ugly that it doesn't even want to show it. Anyways, um, what's the story behind this one? Let me take a look here. Keep in mind, I think you put tenant occupied on here I, I don't really care if it's an occupied remember you can still get deals with properties that have tenants it's just a different approach also depends on your environment Man, there's really let me tr try going down the street a little bit see if i can get some kind of angle on this because it doesn't really show much okay well this is the house a big block all right so anyways let's see they're asking ninety thousand dollars okay he states that electric, plumbing, AC, roof are all in good condition, overall fair condition, tenant occupied, 12-month lease. All right, so let's give him a call so he can pick up the phone. I'll, I'll also explain to you how I handle leads that have tenants because there's a right way going about it and a wrong way. It just depends on the seller. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Otherwise, let's get started here. Um, let's see here. All right, let's give him a call. I haven't had anybody rude in a long time. I know you guys get a, a, a lot of fun out of that, but lately I haven't had any mean people. I guess everybody's in a good mood. All right, so let me run the comps while it's ringing. I always, oh, hello? Hello. Hey, Mr. Crawford. My name is Steve, and I believe you spoke with my partner in regards to your property in uh, Jacksonville. Uh, I don't know if I did or not. I've talked to a lot of people. On Spires Avenue, were you still interested in selling that property? Yeah, for 90000 yeah. Okay, great. That's why I'm calling you, to give you an offer. Did I catch it a good time? Well, yeah, actually, I'm kind of busy, so. You're busy? What's a better time to call you back? What was that? Is your offer 90000 I wanted to ask you a few more questions about it because we might be able to do that. We might not, but I don't want to waste your time. I just need to know a little bit more information. But if you're busy, I can always have my partner give you a call back. Just need to know the best callback time. Well, I don't know. I'm busy moving into my new house. so. Oh, yeah. What's a, what's a better time I can call you back? Maybe this evening, tomorrow morning, or my partner? Uh, I, I don't know. You just find the time, call back. If I can, I will. If I can, I won't. Okay, no problem. I'll have my partner try giving you a call this evening if, if 
we don't get an answer, I'll have him call tomorrow morning, okay? Okay. Have a good evening. All right. Bye. All right, so who submitted this lead? Make sure you call them back this evening. He didn't give me a, a time, and the reason I always ask, like I will never try to talk to somebody that doesn't have time to talk on the phone because if anything, it's going to hurt your lead. Believe it or not, if, if, if let's say I'm moving. I mean he's moving into a house. If he's in the middle of moving, I mean you, there's a lot that goes into moving, right? If, if you're moving stuff um, – and you try to get information out of the person, you try to force them to make time for you, it's not going to go well. It's actually going to hurt rapport. So just make sure that you call them at a time that makes sense is what I would say. Um, who submitted this lead? Delisha, you submitted this lead. Make sure you call this gentleman back this evening or tomorrow. Okay. Uh, let's call the next person. Let me get this off the screen because it's bothering me. <laughs> There's some houses that it'll show like it's censored. I don't know why that is, or maybe they could request that they're on the uh, do not take pictures of my house list for Google Street View. But I, I see that every once in a while. Anyways, next house is in Houston. Let's pull up the address here and break it down and see what we got going on. Give me one second. Um, while I'm pulling this up, I was going to tell you about tenants. Some people are scared to lock up properties that have tenants. Okay. Don't ever be scared to lock up a property that has tenants. Your buyer depends on who you're going to sign it to. If you're wholesaling it, your buyer may want the property tenants. If it's cash flowing, some people, they want to buy the properties vacant. It's preferred vacant. If you get a property to tenants and you push that deal out to uh, you know rehabbers, it's probably not going to make sense to them unless they also have rental properties and they told you that. Whenever you are looking to acquire a property and get it under contract that has tenants, number one, you have to figure out what is uh, the relationship between the homeowner and the tenants. Is it a good relationship? Right? Some sellers have a really good relationship with the tenants, but they don't want the tenants knowing that they're selling the house, right? Um, so, you know, you don't want to spook the tenants out because then if they get spooked out, they might make it harder on the seller, okay? But typically I say, hey, we create win-win situations. Um, we'll never, this one shows everything. We'll never, um, you know, reach out to the, the tenants unless it's with your permission, um, and if we ever have to take a look at the property, we will just say we're inspectors. You don't have to really disclose that, Hey, I'm buying this house and I'm the new owner and I plan on close. Like you don't got to do all that stuff. It could spook the tenants. The second scenario is some sellers, uh, homeowners, they will not care, um, what you do with the property. They may have had a really bad experience. Okay. And if they had a bad experience, they're not really going to care what happens to it. So let me pull up this property. You just got to figure out which route is the best route to go because if the tenant has a good relationship with the homeowner, you have to create win, win, win situations. I always say we never just kick people out. We want to figure out do they want to stay, do they want to go, if they want to go, uh, what budget, what location, what time frame. If they don't want to go, what if we compensate you? Some people, you'd be surprised. You pay them 500 bucks, they'll pack their stuff and leave, Okay. Um, are they in a month to month or annual lease? These are questions that you have to ask. Okay. But never just, um, you know, go out of your way to do your own thing with the tenants. Anyways, this person asking price, not specified, not specified. That's not good. Um, doesn't really matter. Roof, kitchen, foundation issues, bathroom, fair condition. Another one. This one's, uh, he wants to sell, but wife isn't open to selling. Try to talk with them to find a solution, but he's not really into it. it. Doesn't really sound like a motivated lead. And let me tell you, if you're ever talking to a spouse, uh, one wants to sell, the other doesn't want to sell, it's not going to be a deal right there. You have to follow up. If you ever have a couple and one's on doesn't want to sell, one does want to sell, you have to try to get them together on the same page. What I like to do is I like to have them on a three-way call or we'll set up an appointment in person with one of our agents. Because, you know, it, it's really a waste of time trying to get them both on the same page. It only takes one person to say no. And, uh, you know, you're going to waste a lot of time. 
But anyways, he wants to retire well, the reason for settling. So let's figure out what's going on here. Maybe we can get the, the spouse, the wife on the phone. Who knows? Let's give him a call, see what happens. <clears throat> Always try to get them both on the line. If not, try to schedule an appointment. If one person doesn't want to sell, it's okay. Don't beat yourself over it. It happens a lot. Just follow up with the lead. So let me call this lead. I'll put on speaker. This one is in Houston, Texas. She picked up and she hung up. Let's call right back. You gotta call back. Unless she's busy and she tells you, keep calling back. Don't blow her up. Just call twice. Don't get the point. Hold on a second. Let me make sure. Yeah, this is the right phone number. Okay. Let's see if she picks up again. Not even ringing. Oh, hello? Yes. Mr. Crowley. Yes. Hey, my name is Steven. I, I think you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property in Rockingham Street. Were you still looking to sell? Not right now. No matter how much we pay, you wouldn't be looking to sell? Uh, let me just trust my wife. Call me tomorrow for my new time. Okay, we prefer mornings or afternoons? Mornings. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you. All right. You know, it's the first time uh, I called him. He didn't pick up the phone, uh, but the second time I called him, he picked up the phone. Now, it seems to me just by his tone <laughs> that uh, he's not really, you know, he, he's got to go through with his wife. I don't think the wife is on board, but get a time frame. Call me tomorrow. Call me Monday. You prefer mornings or afternoons. Don't ever get off the phone with somebody without getting a time or time frame. If they don't give you specific time, get a time frame. Okay, get a time frame. That's all that matters. Okay. All right. So this guy did not, um, he's not ready right now. That's okay. Let's see what else we got here. So that was in Houston. Let's go over to Atlanta. Call this guy. He entered the phone. Whoever submitted that lead, Mr. Crawley on Rockingham street in Houston, um, make sure that you call him back tomorrow or Monday. Just keep calling him. The goal with somebody that has a spouse that is not on the same page is to get them on the line. If they don't want to talk online, get with them face to face. Okay. That's all that matters. All right. So let's move on to the next one. At least people are picking up the phone. All right. So let's, uh, let's take this off. Okay. Don't ever let a spouse that says no be a wall between you and closing the deal. Because if one person says yes, there's already some soft commitment there and some motivation, depending what their situation is. And a lot of times, even if one person says no and one person says yes, if the uh, one of the people really interested in selling and they're willing to sign a contract, we will get that signature. Obviously, if both people are on the deed, we need two signatures. But if we get one signature, it kind of starts the momentum. It gets the ball rolling. So by the time the other partner is on the line, the the uh, the person that signed the contract already has some kind of soft commitment. So you never know what might happen. They might get into an argument, but hey, you're just doing your business. You're just talking to the person that wants to sell the house. What's the worst thing that can happen? They get mad at you? No, they get mad at each other, but you're just doing your job, right? Get under contract, get the ball rolling, start some momentum. If they say no, it's okay. Just follow up with them. That's all that matters, okay? Anyways, uh, so this person, uh, they're asking $120,000. Let me pull up the property so I can show you guys what I'm looking at. Oh, this is very interesting. How do I uh, – oh, here it is. Okay, so let me share my screen. Very small house, very big yard. Hopefully this isn't a spouse situation. I don't think it is according to what I'm seeing here. All right, so this is the house. Um this is a very interesting fence. Might be in the middle of nowhere. 
Anyways, this is the house right here. All right, well, so what's the deal with this house? <clears throat> Not many notes on here. This house may be in the middle of nowhere. Let me see why I'm pulling this up. Give me some issues here. Um, so they're asking $120,000. Okay. What repairs are needed? No notes on that. Um, what's the property condition? Broke down house. Now it's just land. Oh, they, they tore it down, I guess. 1.7 acres. That's good to know. Um, he wants to move it to Florida. That's the reason he wants to sell. All right. So let's give him a call. So I'm assuming the house doesn't exist there anymore, according to your notes. Uh, so what I do with these is I start looking at it as um, land value. And they can understand that. That gives me an advantage to really start off the conversation. Okay. All right. So anyways, let's give them a call. See what happens. I think I'm going to go on IG Live for a little bit while I'm doing this. Uh, so let's call the person first, see if they pick up the phone. Anytime the house is torn down, I start looking at new construction comps, okay? I'm now looking at land value. But let's see what the scenario is with this person. Let's see if they pick up the phone. Okay, got their name and everything. Miss Edwards. Hello. Hey, can you hear me okay? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you, man. Hey, uh, my name is Steve, and I, I think you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on um, SD Strive. Were you still looking to sell? Look, Steve, everybody been playing, man. I have 1.7 acres, right? Yeah. And um, and um, that's and I'm about um. Uh, about, about two to three thousand feet from Interstate 85. Yeah. Four minutes from the airport, man. The most developed area right now in College Park, man. I'm, not, I'm only asking one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Nobody want to pay. You're asking how much? One hundred and fifty thousand. Easy. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you said? Yes, sir. You couldn't have no money in seconds, man. Okay. Did I catch it a good time? I want to make you an offer. What's the offer, sir? Yeah, so my process is real simple. I just want to ask you a few more questions about it. I mean, it's a lot, so there's not much to ask. But I'll go ahead and evaluate the area right on the computer, see what I can offer you. It takes about seven minutes. Is that okay? Go ahead. Perfect. So this is just land. Um, the house, how long has that been a vacant lot? Um, about three months ago since I demolished the, the house. Oh, three months. Okay, so it hasn't been that long. Okay. Yeah, because I want to, I, I, I want to, um, you know, I was going to build something on it for investment, you know? Okay, and you're, you're not looking to do that anymore, just looking to sell it? No, nah, yes, because I'm thinking I'm moving to Florida, man. Oh, I live in Florida. What part of Florida are you looking to move to? Oh man, that's a great, great market. So if you got an offer that made sense to you, what, what kind of time frame were you looking to sell? About a week, a month, a couple months? If you have the right money, I sell it today. Okay. <laughs> and you're if I gave you the money, when were you looking to move? There's no move in the air, sir, because I demolished the place. You get it? I demolished the house. Right. Well, when are you looking to move to Orlando? Okay, perfect. I so, yeah, yeah. Are there any septic or utilities attached to the lot? I beg your pardon? Are there any septic or utilities attached to the lot? Well, the utility, we, 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 we um, um we I'm looking at the comps. The There's, the the, the it's not much it here. He's asking way too much. But, it's, you know, I, I don't, but I don't whoever submitted this lead, looks like I, I, you I got them to 120. Right. Now he's up at 150, if I heard correctly. Okay. And you know, the, 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 um, the, the, the guy so I'm going to call him out on it and see what happens. 
see what he, how he reacts to it. But I can already tell you, um, not even close. Gotcha. And last time you spoke with my partner. No, I was saying last time you spoke with my partner, you were looking to get 120 out of it. Is that right? Well, every day I realize this property is valuable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me well, take a look around the area here. Yeah. Okay. You're the only person that owns the property? Me and my daughter. But it's mine. I just only not buy it in her name because then anything can go wrong with it. Okay. Perfect. But it's not her. It's mine. It's mine. I found one comp, one like good comp here. Got it. And I wanted to ask you, um, if we can cover the closing costs, the fees, the commissions, what do you think would be the best price you can do? Uh, uh, 120. I'm going to do. 120? No, if you cover the, the, the cost, come on If I cover the closing costs, the fees, you know, the commissions, I can really close whenever you like as long as the title's good. But what kind of um, what would be the best price you can do? Uh, if I did all that for you, you see, but I, I'm, I'm never really, I never really to get into that before. Yeah. You know, because this is the first piece of land in my life. I'm gonna sell. It's I, don't really look, I don't really sell that. It's the first time in your life that you're gonna sell. I don't sell that. Land, land don't make anymore. I don't want to sell that. Gotcha. But so, what's got you interested in selling this property? It's a very nice area. And you know, uh, when I went there, I said, you know, our friends who live close by, I say, you know, I want to live there. Yeah. But then, but then, you know, if you've been retired after, you know, maybe another five years, um, I'm not looking for work or anything like that, you know. I'm gotcha. Put my own, you know, I don't know if you guys can understand this guy. My offer is probably going to be around 28000 or 18000 He wants 120 Gotcha. Um, now, I, I don't want to waste your time because I'm looking at the area here. And, you know, as far as land, are you familiar with Allen Drive? Allen Drive? Allen Drive. No, we're not. Yeah. That's like uh, right at, it's not too far from your property, but this is land as well. And it looks like this I'm sold for close. I'm pretty close to you, Nancy. Yeah, this sold for twenty eight thousand dollars. Oh, maybe um maybe that side is not developing as yet, so I don't know yet. Because that's not close to me, I don't know it. Yeah, it's right next to you. Now if we were to pay your lot cash, we would probably have to be somewhere. How many miles from me? That is? What How was that? Miles? How many miles? It's so about one mile, miles? one mile west. One mile? Less than a mile west. Yeah. Yeah, so if we were to pay cash for your lot, we would have to be somewhere around that range. Otherwise, you know, I think listing it would be the best option. What range? Well, that one sold for 28. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I bought my for 30. Was selling for 60. The guy gave me an option. Mm -hmm. Because the guy knew me very well and you know, he sold me before he passed. What was that? Since okay. So, yeah, I see that you purchased it for thirty-one thousand dollars back in the day. So, from O nine, from where? O nine. Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah. So two thousand nine. So, I, 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 why would a man give me my gift at half price? Yeah, I don't know. I would, you know, I, I get it. Then I give it to somebody. Exactly. Exactly. So if you know, have you ever considered listing it on the market for a much higher price than what I'm looking at? Well my son is a real we're thinking of doing it right now. Oh yeah, that's that's what I would do. I wouldn't want to waste your time because we would be nowhere near one twenty eight or one twenty. Yeah. 
Five Star Life here in New York. So we're going to do that. Perfect. Okay. Well, keep my number or my partner's number, and we'll follow up with you in the near future to see if anything changes, okay? All right, brother. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Okay. You so it's really hard for me to understand um, what he was saying, but my max offer, I mean, I'd have to be around 28000 There, His lot size is um, 74000 but there was one that – is almost 400,000 square feet the lot size and so for 150 that would make sense if his but that's like it's not even close i don't see any new construction in the area that's the first thing i look for whenever somebody has land that they want to sell i look at the new construction is there a demand for new construction and land um being bought so it could be built on other than that i mean i'll look at vacant land there's only two vacant lots that sold the closest one to his uh sold for twenty eight thousand. let me take a look here and you know otherwise I, I wouldn't even waste time i would just say hey like um is this something you might be open to listing his son's an agent according to what he said i'm not you know some people they'll use that as smoke screen or whatever they say they're planning on listing it i could tell he would sell for the right price but i don't see it at all how he's going to get that price this area is not the best area there's no new construction so keep that in mind um dang actually this one is sold for twenty thousand. this was actually way bigger somebody got a great deal on that doesn't mean that yours isn't a deal but you just got to get it at the right price so that is not a deal unfortunately okay so let's uh let's go on to the next one okay if you guys have any questions drop them in let me see if we got some questions we got uh let's answer some questions let's see what we got here hold on I got all these tabs open. I gotta, I gotta close a few. How long do you cold call the same list if no one answers for seven months? Do you keep those prospects in the database or move on to a different list to focus on? I would actually never delete your data. Okay, um, I'm not sure how many uh, leads are in that list, but if you're calling them more than twice a day, you probably need a larger list. Um, but we don't delete data. We always want to squeeze as much uh, numbers and people in that list. And you can always recycle that list, right? So if you call those numbers, the people that don't answer, well, the people that do answer don't want to sell, you can um, recycle them, take those off. You only want to talk to people that haven't answered the phone. But you can use trip campaigns. You can keep cold calling. You can follow up with those leads. So I would not um, delete the list, but I would definitely get a lot more data 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 whatever you guys want to call it um or do you keep forever until they found we keep it forever maestro what's up cash for keys closer olympics yeah we got some good announcements for that uh three top books you recommend for wholesalers um this this one right here well here's two and here's i got so many but i think these are really good. So Traction is an excellent book every business owner needs. Traction. Uh, Profit First. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Mike Michalowicz. You need to read this book. These two books go very well together. Okay. Number three, The Art of Persuasion. Give this to your sales team. Study this. This is like – this is how – um, this, this is stuff you can apply not only in business, but in real life too. This is, it teaches you how to create win-win situations. You never want to manipulate people, but you do want to influence them in making the best decision for themselves and yourself. Creating win-win situations is why I feel I'm pretty successful at this stuff. Because if you know me or my style, I am not a used car salesman approach. It's not me. I want to give people options. I want to control the options. And I let them pick the option, but I want to remain in control of the outcome. Okay, if that makes sense. So, man, I got a lot of favorite books, but these three are really good. Okay, Traction, Profit First, Start of Persuasion. I mean, I got more on here. I got Scaling Up, uh, 12 Week. I mean, there's so much. There's so much. I think I'll do a video on my YouTube channel on my favorite books and how they can benefit you. Never Split the Difference. Uh, that's actually one I have – Right here, Never Split the Difference. This is another great book on negotiations, okay, by Chris Voss, 
former FBI hostage negotiator. You could definitely learn a thing or two from this book. If he can negotiate uh, with hostages and FBI, take things that and apply this in your business with sellers. Okay. No pressure. Okay. Um, how to win friends, influence people. Perfect. I mean, I have it right there as well. It's like a sales Bible. Anyone here in Houston, let's partner up. Perfect. Perfect. Um, how do we, oh wait, hold on. I skipped one. How do we establish win-win relationships with realtors? This is a very good question because a lot of realtors don't like investors and a lot of investors don't like realtors. And I, I just think it's, I mean, why don't you like each other? Because you don't have the abundance mindset. You feel like they're going to steal your stuff. You can make more money working together than separately, in my opinion. We're always looking for agents to work with, okay? The best way to establish a win-win relationship, number one, make sure that you are looking for an investor-friendly agent. You don't want to look for a random agent and expect them to be uh, love uh, investors. That's not the way it works. Unfortunately, some agents hate wholesalers. Some wholesalers hate agents. I, I, don't, I don't look at it that way. Okay. It's enough deals out there for everybody, but how do you, how do you establish a win-win relationship? My business is virtual, whether I'm in Tampa, my backyard, whether I'm in the West coast, East coast, we need boots on the ground. We don't want to hire somebody off Craigslist to go, um, negotiate with, with sellers because there will be people you can't close over the phone, but what do you do with that? What do you do with people that you can't close over the phone? We want to have somebody meet them face to face that is credible, that's professional, and that's a good has good sales skills. And I find those to be investor friendly agents. We do give them a nice cut. If they go out there and negotiate the deal and they lock it up, we actually give them ten percent of the assignment fee. If they go out there just to um, get a signature, we give them three percent of the assignment fee. On top of that, we give them all the retail listings and we split a referral fee. On top of that, we pay them for photos and babysitting buyers. So the more value I can give to agents, um, it's a win-win situation. That's what I what I look at it. So let's make a few more calls. Keep the questions coming. Great question. Make sure you leverage working with agents that are investor friendly. So let's call the next one here. I just called this guy that wanted too much for his lot. Okay. The next one is in Savannah. Let me pull it up. Make sure when you guys submit these leads, you try to put as much information as you can. If somebody does not want to give you how much they're asking for, that doesn't matter. A lot of people will not tell you how much they want. It's up to you to get a price out of them or give them a range that they agree to. I don't give offers. Our team doesn't give offers. We give offer ranges. The homeowner likes the range. We get the deal. Okay? That's how it works. Okay, so let me pull this property up and tell you the story beyond this one. Um, wow, this is actually in really good shape. If these photos are recent, let me pull up and show you what I'm looking at. And these kinds of properties, before I show you this, I mean, just because it's in this good shape doesn't mean that it's not a deal. Depending, I mean, some people, I mean, this house is in great shape. And, you know, they're going through something in life. It happens. They're willing to trade equity um, for speed. Okay, so anyways, this person is asking $275,000, okay? Um, $275,000. What repairs are needed? Roof, floors, wall needs some, some word. I don't know what that means. I'm assuming work. Needs some work. Uh, reason for selling. He has many properties, and this property is in downtown area away from the others. Perfect. All right, so let's look at these photos. I mean, the property's in great shape. You know what's funny is the guy's asking uh, 275 Now, the Zestimate isn't always spot on, but it's always not too far away. And the Zestimate for this property is around $140,000. He's asking 275 I mean, the house is clean, but I, if they're asking that above the Zestimate, it's usually a, a red flag. But I don't judge people based upon how much they're asking. I don't care because I've seen people drop uh, significantly. But anyways, let's give him a call and see what happens. Savannah, Georgia. Remember, if you guys have any leads you'd like to submit, head over to the reitoolbox.com to submit your leads, and I'll call them live. Keep the questions coming if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback. Uh, let's call this person see if they pick up the phone. 
it's always interesting for people that are firm at a price that's over $125,000 of the Zestimate to kind of convince me on why it's worth that. But then again, they might just be throwing out that number out of thin air. We don't know. So let's call them um, and see what happens. <clears throat> Come on, ring. I wonder when these were last taken. That's another important thing. All right. Um, it's not even ringing with this person. Let me call. Let me hang up. Call, try again. Hold on. And I noticed that he has a lot of properties. Whenever you're calling an investor, you want to speak their lingo. You can say ARV. You can say cash comps. It actually gives you credibility and it lets them know you know what you're talking about. When you're speaking with homeowners, don't say cash comps. Say similar properties and as is condition. When you're talking to homeowners, don't say ARV. Say fully updated properties. Okay. You can also be a lot more upfront with investors. Let me pull this up on. Um, dang, it's not even ringing. Their phone may be disconnected or something. Yeah, unfortunately, this is. Uh, we're going to have to skip this because it's not even ringing. Nothing's happening. Okay. Uh, let's answer another question before I call the next one. For virtual sales, how do we get them to go on appointments and get contracts signed? Oh, I think this was related to the original question you asked about agents. Um, the sense of, uh, let me see, work with those investors referrals. Yes. How do you get them to go on appointments? Yeah, you just set appointments. But the thing is you can't tell an agent, hey, go on this appointment for me. You have to like let them know they're going to get paid and how much they're going to get paid. You know, they're on straight commission. They don't work for free, obviously. Um, it's thundering out there. We've got a, a storm going outside. So if I'm a little staticky or something, I apologize in advance. Um, anyways, move on to the next lead. This person, I don't know why sometimes you call people and it doesn't even ring. I mean, I've, I've had all the other calls today. They've rang. Let me call one more time. And if not, we'll move on to the next one. Oh, look, it's ringing. There we go. I don't know what they did differently. What happened? Let me share my screen again. I'll call twice. This house is in uh, good shape. Doesn't look distressed to me. But I don't think it's $125,000 over full market value condition. Okay. Please leave your message. I'll call one more time since it's ringing, and if not, we'll move on to the next lead. Interesting colors. You got, I think, red in the kitchen, black by the staircase, blue by the, I think that's the dining area. It's like an art gallery in there, purple in the laundry, green in the bathroom. It's not renovated, but it's in good shape. It's clean. Hello? Hey, Mr. Watson. Yeah. Hi, my name is Steven. I think you spoke with my partner a while back uh, in regards to your property on 40th Street. Were you still looking to sell? Yeah. Uh, I'm talking to a guy about that. Perfect. Did I catch it a good time? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Perfect. So the reason I'm calling, I actually want to give you an offer on the property. Uh, my process is actually very simple. I just want to ask you a few more questions other than what I see in the notes. I'll go and evaluate the area right in the computer, see what I can offer you. It takes about seven minutes. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Perfect. And, and before I get started, Mr. Watson, I just want to let you know, just like I do with everybody else up front, we are an investment company. So if I'm not a good fit, I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, we may not always be the best fit, but if we're not, we do have a team of agents just in case, real estate agents, okay? Uh -huh. Perfect. So I'm looking here in the notes that were uh, jotted down by my partner, a, what repairs are needed, the roof floors, walls need some work. You're asking 275 Can you tell me a little bit more specifically about the condition of the house that needs some work? Now I'm running the cops. And I you can't go ahead and fix one. We 
you know this. You're an investor. Yeah, exactly. I don't have to go over this like you don't know. You know, if you want the right money for that house in that area, mm-hmm. you have to do a complete rehab. Okay. And these, I see photos on Zillow. Are these recent or are, are these old old photos? I haven't looked on Zillow to see, but it looks just the same as it did in the front as it did before. Uh, mm. and, and, and in fact, we painted the front here recently. Oh, okay. Now I guess these photos are recent. The house looks like it's in excellent shape. Um, is it currently occupied by tenants or is it vacant? Is it leaking or anything? No, I have, I put I spend about thousand dollars putting tarps on the top of it so it don't leak at all. Okay, perfect. And if you got a cash offer that made sense, um, you know, what kind of time frame were you looking to sell? About like a week, a month, a couple months? No, be the next day for me. Next day? Right. Okay. So I need some work. Um did you have any ideas to what you think the property might be worth in its current condition or what you were looking to at least sell for? I tell you what I was selling for 275. 275? Yeah. Right. Let me take a look here in the area. So I'm looking at similar properties and as is condition. Are you familiar with 39th Street? So there's a property on 210 West 39th Street. This one sold for 200000 Yeah, so I think renovated these properties are. Um, what you say? What the address? It is two ten West Thirty Nine. And there's another one on two o eight West Thirty Seventh Street. The sold for one fifty. Yeah. Because that you know this as an investor, we, you know we don't pay full market value. We would have to buy it. At what similar properties are selling for? Like we're looking at cash comps. You know what I mean? Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yes, sir. So I think you know renovated these properties, fully renovated. I'm looking at a few. I mean, they're selling over between three fifty to four hundred is what I'm seeing here. Um, okay, you said two ten West. Two ten West Thirty Ninth Street. So for two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Let me see. Okay, what's the other one? The other one was 208 West 37th Street. This one on 210 is probably the most similar to yours, only because uh, it's similar square footage, year built, and it's in you know it's in similar shape. Um, yeah, we would have to be somewhere closer to that price range. If we recover the closing costs, you know the fees and commissions and close whenever you'd like. What do you think would be the best price you can do? But um, how much was two hundred eight West thirty seven? Two eight. That one sold for one fifty. Yeah, it looks like in as is condition, there's some between one fifty to two hundred is what I'm seeing here. Just by just by looking at recent data in the area. Okay. That's the only two pumps you got. There's a there's a, a lot of other ones, but they're a little bit smaller. Those are the two closest ones I can see. Let me take a look at another one. Yeah, those are really the the ones that are most similar to yours. I do see some other comps that are renovated that are selling for closer to three fifty to four hundred thousand. Um, but obviously I, that's not where we would be at. Um, but if, if we were to buy yours and as this condition, I mean, what do you think would be the best price you can do considering the the amount of work it needs? Yeah, we would probably be closer to that two hundred thousand. We would have to be around that range. Okay, uh, on the earnest money, do y'all put a, a decent amount on the earnest money? Are y'all trying to put a little small payment just to tie it over the show. 
Yeah, we put earnest money in. Um, now, obviously, we have to confirm everything that we discuss over the phone. So we would have to take a look at the property no matter what. But right, we, right, right, yeah, right. and yeah. and we always put earnest money. It's always due upon inspection. So how much? Um, if it's two hundred thousand, how much earnest money y'all put on it? Typically, with that price point, it could be anywhere between a thousand to two thousand. You know. That, what was that? Oh, in, inspection period is probably between seven to fourteen business days. It could be faster depending on the, how fast title is. Fourteen business days. Mm -hmm. And we usually close in, in less than thirty days as long as it, it's a clean title. Oh yeah, clean. There's no liens or taxes owed on it, right? No, no, I'll pay over that. Okay, perfect. Then you, you know how it is. The process is going to be a lot smoother. Um, well, with that being said, does that sound like something you might be open to? Hello. Um, no, not before I try to get more. If I can't get any more than that, I'll have to call you back. But I'm definitely going to advertise it for more. And uh, see, my thing is, people know that property is going to be worth in, uh, in about three years. Yeah. And they know it's a good investment. So they'll probably pay more than 200000 for it. And if I'm wrong, then I can you know, always back up. Take the price down. Can't take it up. Take it down. Yeah. And are, do you live local in the area? Yeah. Because what we also do, I know I'm I'm giving you more or less a range, but typically if we're close, I mean, we'd love to take a look at the property, set an appointment, and we'll get eyes on the property. That way, we can walk it with you and give you an offer down to the penny if that's something you're open to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna speak with my partner. Um, what's your schedule like? You know, next week. Do you prefer mornings, afternoons, evenings? Um, either one will be fine for me. I can do. I probably do either better. Perfect. Let me get my partner first, and that way we'll schedule something that works best for them and yourself. We'll get eyes on the property, and we'll give you an offer down to the penny. See what we can do. Okay. I, I appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. You see how that's done? You see how that's done? That's how you do it right there. This is the money bill, right, by the way. This guy was asking 275. I'm looking at comps. Now, I'm trying to be conservative with this stuff. But he didn't say no to that. Now, he said, I want more, right? But the guy is open to it. He's open to it. He, he knows that I know the lingo because I was talking about the comps. I'm not afraid to give him uh, uh, addresses because those are literally in similar condition to his. I'm looking at property similar condition. Now, something interesting that I'm looking at here, I did see some high comps, but obviously I don't want to say, hey, I'm looking at these super high comps. I mean, you can get this for your property. I always let them know it may not be a good fit. I'd have to be closer to that 200,000. I didn't say we could do 200,000. I said I'd have to be close to it. You don't want to say an exact number because once you do, you're stuck at that number. But check this out. I'm looking at comps here. I, mean, I see one for $600,000. Um, right across the street. Let me see what they bought this for. This is a really good deal. Who submitted this lead, by the way? Uh, Mr. Watson. Let me see. 617. Who submitted this lead? Rashawn, you submitted this lead, I believe. Yes, this is an excellent lead. This is a deal. We could do, probably do more than... Um, it's crazy how much off the estimate is on this one. This is a very diverse area. I mean, you have some price, you have some price points. I mean, selling for like, there's one for 150 that was needed work. There's one for 800,000. And how far is that? You got to be very careful. Some neighborhoods are very block by block. It's kind of like Tampa in a very diverse market. You can have a million dollar house next door. You can have a trailer park next door. But this is why you have to be very specific. You have to look at the year built. The square footage. This is uh this was built in 1900s, about 2,500 square feet. I want to look at this comp right here. Let me see if I could pull this up. This one was built in 1900. It's 2,000 square feet. This sold for six hundred thousand dollars. This is a deal. This is a freaking deal, man. And the house looks the exact same. I can't show you the address, obviously, but I'm looking at the comp right here. It sold for six hundred thousand dollars. His house is in good shape. Rashad, you got a deal. You got a deal.
Now, the reason I set up an appointment, if you don't have anybody to go on an appointment, by the way, let me know. I'll connect. We'll work on it together. But you do not want to let the person go off the phone unless you accepted um, an appointment. This is a good deal. The ARVs, $600,000 or above. I always anchor price. You notice how I anchor price them, $150,000, $200,000. I'm not saying that's what we would pay you. I'm just giving facts in the neighborhood. So congratulations, Rashawn. This is a deal. If you don't have anybody, please reach out to me out. We can actually get on the phone. Shoot me a DM. Um, you have to set up an appointment in person. Remember I told you guys earlier that you're not going to close every single deal over the phone. This is why you need boots on the ground. This is why you want to leverage good relationships with investor-friendly agents in the area because the ARV is $600,000. I gave him an anchor price of $200,000. Obviously, he wants as much as he can get, but I think I'd probably even give him close to two seventy-five dollars because the absolute best comp is right on the other side, same year built, smaller house. It's actually 500 square feet smaller. And this one is, um, when did this sell? This sold two months ago. So for six, this is a deal, man. This is a really good deal. So um, reach out to me. I'll set up somebody to go on an appointment if you don't have anybody. Otherwise, you can give the guy exactly what he's asking for. So what I'm trying to let you guys know is people that um, people that will not sign or not ready to sign over the phone, you have to make sure, okay? Uh, you have to make sure that you let them know exactly what I just said. So let me repeat how I set this up. Hey, by the way. Um, you know, typically what we do if you're local, right? Cause if they're not local, it doesn't make sense. What we do is if you're open to it, we can walk, the, we'll set up an appointment. We'll walk the property and, um, we'll, you know, we'll give you an offer down to the penny. How's that sound? The guy said, yes. Okay. Hey, this, uh, Rashawn, do I reach out to you? Oh, okay. All right. Rashawn, uh, shoot me a DM, shoot me a DM on Instagram. Let in, let me know it's from the deal desk. Okay. But, um, yes, th that is a perfect way to end the call. Can we see the two books again too fast? Sorry. Sometimes I talk fast. Sometimes I show you stuff fast. So the two books for, I mean, business is traction and profit first traction and profit first. I also really like the art of persuasion for sales skills, but let me, you guys can take a picture of this screenshot or whatever. Let me hold it up for a few seconds. Traction by Gino Wickman. Okay, Traction by Gino Wickman. Traction by Gino Wickman. Hopefully that's enough time for you to do that. All right, Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. Hopefully I said that right. Okay, and then The Art of Persuasion by Bob Berg. This is one of my favorite sales books, The Art of per uh, Persuasion by Bob Berg. Okay, make sure you guys do that. If you're watching me on YouTube, I expect you guys to hit that like and subscribe button, please. I do this stuff for free. It doesn't cost anything. Just take bits and pieces of what I'm doing here, implement it in your business, and I can probably almost guarantee results, okay? Um, well, I guarantee results. Whether they're good or bad really depends on you. But take bits and pieces of what I'm doing here. This stuff works. You saw me just set up an appointment with this guy. You saw me on what I said. So uh, help me out. Click that like, subscribe button. Uh, it's 1 o'clock. I'm going to get off. Great call today. Make sure you guys subscribe. Um, by the way, one last announcement. A lot of people have been asking me. The next EFC boxing event, okay, that we do with charity and entrepreneurs. If you haven't noticed, um, EFC boxing, it's October 29th in Clearwater, Florida. The sponsorship slots are now open. So if you or your company are interested in being involved as a sponsor, Shoot me a DM on Instagram. Serious people only. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that show. I will see you guys next time. Go crush it. Have a good one.